Can you write a function to traverse a binary tree in order and print out the value of each node as it passes? We'll cover the three different ways you can apply depth first search to trees and show you how to implement in order. This is Algo Daily. In order to properly use binary trees during a technical interview, you're going to want to really understand how to properly traverse it for your specific needs in solving the problem. And we know that there's two very high level ways to traverse a tree. Um, in this case, the one in front of us is a binary tree. There's depth first traversal and breadth first traversal. So with depth first traversal, otherwise known as DFS, you're trying to go as deep as possible, typically, when you traverse and go through the nodes of a tree. And your overwhelming imperative is to go deep before you go broad. Whereas with breadth first traversal, you're typically going row by row, level by level, when you traverse the nodes. Both have their pros and cons, but it's important to know which one to use in each specific use case and what the pros and cons are. In this video, we're going to cover three ways to conduct depth first traversal. And the three ways are pre-order, in-order, and post-order. It's important to first cover some key terminology. So first, when we talk about traversing, we're basically meaning just going through all the nodes of the tree. Because you can't really operate on a tree as a whole. You can operate on one node at a time. For example, if you wanted to print out each letter of the nodes in the tree, you would have to visit each one in order to know what letter to print out. And typically, when we're given a binary tree or any other kind of tree, we tend to be given an object pointing to the root node. So this guy at the top right here, A, this is a root node, and these nodes at the bottom that terminate the tree or end the tree are called leaves. We typically go through a diagram or a visualization to properly understand the code before moving on to implementation. But in this case, I think it actually makes more sense to look at the implementation first and then see how it operates on an actual tree. So let's take a look at pre-order traversal. Pre-order traversal is a function here that has a results array that we're going to use to push nodes into, or rather node values into. And we have a helper method that's going to allow us to do the recursion without impacting the result array. So the primary operation we're concerned with is the act of pushing the node we're on to the results array. So as you can imagine, when we do a pre-order traversal, the reason it's called pre is because the operation comes before going to the left node or the right node. So it's pre-traversing of the children. So here we have a diagram of how pre-order traversal works. We start at the root node and we operate on A first. Then, once A is added to the array, then we'll recursively go into the left node first, and we'll operate on L. Then we'll recursively go into L's left child and operate on O, so O will get pushed to the array. Then, because there's no more children to operate on, we'll backtrack and push D to the results array. Now that we're done here, we go back to the original function call from the root and go to the right child. From the right child, we push in G to the results array. We go to the right child's left child 
which is A. We push that. Then we push the right. And then left and right one more time. All right. Now that we've run through pre-order traversal, in-order traversal is essentially the same outline, the same structure. But the big change is that our operation, the one we care about, is now going to sit in between traversal of the left child and traversal of the right child at each pass. So you can see that the only thing that changed was that this one line, res.push root val, is moved to the middle. And so it's in order because it goes left, root, right. So in observing the diagram one more time, the same binary tree, we start at A, but we don't do anything yet. We actually just move leftwards and then leftwards again until we hit a leaf. At the point that we hit a leaf, according to the code, that's when we operate. And so we've recursed enough where we'll push O in, and then we'll backtrack. We'll push L in, and then we'll push D. So notice in this tree, we're pushing in order as well. So O, L, D. Then once we're done here, we backtrack one more time. And notice how the root here is in the middle. It's one of the it's one of the middle nodes to get operated on. So the entire left subtree gets pushed to the array before A does. And from A, we apply the same recursive function where we go right. And if you look at this tree right here, we do five, six, and then we go into a recursive call here and we push L, I, Y, and then it goes five, six, seven, eight, nine. Post order traversal will similarly have the same structure, and the difference is the operation now falls at the very end. So it happens after all the traversing of the left and right children. And we don't push the root node until the very end. If we look at the diagram for post-order traversal, we again will be given A. We'll start there and we'll keep going leftwards. But this time, instead of going in order where we went left, root, right, we do left, right, root. And notice how the tree's general root or global root is the last node to be operated on. We push O, then we push D, then we backtrack to L. And then this entire left side has been completed, but we do the entire right subtree as well before moving on to A. So from here, we do G's two left children first. So A, then we go to I, we do its two children first, A, L, Y, then we return to I, then we return to G, and finally we operate on A. Hence, post all the children's operations.